Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Governland Remote Control webcast. My name is Raul, and on today we will be doing a, a webcast of Governland Remote Control and um, all the features associated with Governland Remote Control version 8. This webcast is designed to get anyone familiar who has not uh, used Governland before. It's designed to get you familiar with Governland Remote Control and um, to understand the features and capabilities of an enterprise remote control solution. Uh, anyone who has uh, prior experience with Governland, uh, this is also a way to uh, help you familiarize yourself with some of the features that you may not have used before or to help you with a little bit of training. If you're currently on Governland version 7, you could use this also as a way to see what's new in version 8 of Governland Remote Control and to see the features uh, that we've added to help you out. If you are in the process of upgrading and you need some help with that, make sure you reach out to our sales department, sales at govland.com, or you can call us at 888-330-4188. We will be happy to uh, get you uh, upgraded to version 8 and um, get you using the uh, features that we're about to demonstrate today. So the way we run this uh, webcast here is I'm going to do a 45-minute demo of uh, of Governland remote control. And then um, as I do this demo, uh, at the end of the 45 minutes, we'll be doing a 15-minute Q&A session. And the way we do the Q&A session is as I'm doing the demo, I'd like everyone to put their question into the chat box. What I'll do at the end of the 15-minute session is I will read the questions out loud and answer them uh, accordingly. This, uh, this webcast is being recorded. Uh, so what will happen after this uh, webcast is done, we'll work on getting it uploaded to our YouTube channel where you can view, uh, go back and view this webcast. Uh, the YouTube channel is youtube.com slash govland. You can also go there to find uh, any other uh, training videos that we may have posted on all of our other features. So again, just for everyone who's joining us now, this uh, this session is being recorded, and you can go to YouTube to to uh, to to view this later on. Uh, as well as um, if you are this this video is really specific to anyone who is in the process of upgrading to Governland, new to Governland or um, who is uh, using version 7 and would like to see Govland Remote Control version 8 features. So what we'll be covering uh, throughout the course of this webinar here is we will be going over all of the remote control features, such as the standard Govland Remote Control. Um, that will include all the new protocols that we've added, as well as the uh, remote shadowing capabilities of Govland the remote monitoring capabilities of Governland, and the remote assistance capabilities of Governland. We'll also be going into um, a little, you know, touching on a little bit of uh, branding and customization, um, as well as the UI elements and the tools that you have at your disposal once you have a uh, Governland session in progress. I'm also going to be going, uh, starting this presentation off with one slide. The uh, slide is designed to get you familiar with the inner workings of Governland, how it works in the background, and, um, and how you actually authenticate to machines and, and, and actually uh, make these connections. So with that information, we're going to get started here. Uh, the first slide we're going to go over, I'm actually going to skip this one here and jump to the... Uh, jump to the um, control slide here. So first and foremost, for anyone who is not familiar with Governland, um, Governland is price per operator, not per node. So you purchase Governland uh, for each person who will be using the software, and you can manage an unlimited amount of machines. The licensing is also uh, perpetual, so it's a one-time cost for the version that you own, and you're entitled to the minor upgrades of that version. Um, Governland is very easy to deploy. Once you have uh, Govland installed in your network uh, or on your machine, Govland will go ahead and manage the agents itself. Um, you'll see it's a very interactive and on-demand system. Um, the agents themselves are very small, very easy to use, and very fast. 
Now, as far as um, configuration goes of Goverland, the all the settings, uh, including the branding and customization and the agent behavior, can, can be controlled um, uh, centrally via either a GPO or the Goverland Central Server. The Goverland Central Server is a free add-on to your Goverland environment. Um, it's highly recommended that you use it if you need to really do some client-side user uh, customization. Now, as far as the security is concerned of Goverland, um, as far as remote control goes, we have upgraded our encryption package. Um, so we now support RC4 encryption as well as AES 256-bit encryption. Um, so the encryption package has been upgraded as well as um, as uh, as some of the compression features uh, that work behind the scenes. Govland works under the authority of the person who is using it. So if you're logged into your machine as um, as a domain admin, Govland will use those credentials that you have to perform the actions uh, necessary on the remote machines. Uh, there is also the ability to customize who is able to initiate remote control sessions via Active Directory groups, as well as to supply alternate credentials for um, for those environments that use uh, alternate credentials to administer their network. Now, as far as auditing goes, Govland can audit the uh, a remote control session, uh, meaning the start time, end time, the technician, the target user, and both machines involved in the connection as well as login and log out events of any machines on your network. So those are some of the behind the scenes um, operations of Goverland. Um, now as far as the agent goes, the agent communicates on a single TCP port. Uh, the single port is 21158, but that is user configurable, so you can go ahead and um, configure the agent to operate as you wish. Um, take note if you're also using some of the other protocols, such as um, uh, Telnet, SSH, and uh, and uh, vPro features, they also operate on their own uh, TCP ports. So that's some of the some of the behind the scenes as far as the Govland uh, management is concerned. So now what we'll do is we're going to jump into some demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and close this slide and jump right into Govland Remote Control. So once you have Govland Remote Control and you've activated your copy on your network, when you go to launch Govland Remote Control, you'll be confronted with a similar UI as this. Uh, we took a lot of uh, time to make sure that we, we give a functional UI, something that you can use um, that's going to make a lot of sense when you're establishing remote control sessions and you need to do a lot of work. The first thing you're going to notice is that Govland has a tabular UI, so you can open up as many connections as you need to, um, and you can work simultaneously connecting to any machines that you want. We also give you a favorites view here on the side, and this favorites view will allow you to customize um, your, your, uh, your layout. You can add static containers, which are basic folders, active directory containers, or IP subnets. You can use these views to, to organize your, your connections and, and uh, begin to also manage the machines without even having to do a remote control connection. Most of the tools that we give you are available in the right-click menu uh, for any node that you add right to the, uh, to the favorites view. So you don't actually have to do a remote control connection to, to begin managing them. So the first thing we're going to, to work on is um, actually establishing remote control sessions with Govland. So the, uh, the first step you would do is you would use the Connect button here. The Connect button automatically defaults to the Govland management protocol uh, as far as um, the initial connection. So the Govland management protocol gives you a lot of options. Uh, first, it gives you the option to use something we call Fast Connect. So with Goverland, we can actually detect user accounts and do partial searches of your directory. So let's say I wanted to, um, to figure out where a user named A. Woods is located. What I'll do is I'll enter a partial username, and Goverland is going to tell me 
uh, bring back all the accounts that begin with the uh, the letters that I specified. So I'll hit set focus. And now Govland is going to present me with a list of all of the locations where Govland actually detects that this user is logged in. So let's think about that for a minute. Um, one of the scenarios that I always hear about and I always like to bring up, uh, especially working on a help desk, is um, I don't like to fumble with the uh, asking a user where they're logged in. Uh, it might be they might be looking for a sticker somewhere on the side of their machine, or they might have to walk through a few steps on their local workstation to figure out uh, where what their user uh, what machine there is that they're logged in. Um, or I might have to fumble, fumble through some spreadsheets and so on to find this information out. So one thing we're doing right off the bat is we're connecting the user account to where they're logged in. So by knowing that information, I can just type in their username. Let Govland tell me where they're connected, and then click the Connect button. These sessions that you see here include any physical console session, any RDP session or Citrix session, uh, any VDI session, any login sessions, any Windows machine where the agent is available. Uh, Govland will display that information here. So now when I click Connect, Govland will proceed right through to the connection. Let me uh, get rid of this here so you can get a little bit of a better view. Um, so here what we have is, bring that back up, is our notification banner. So the notification banner uh, can be branded and customized. You can customize this image right here to, um, to your logo. You can customize any of this text here. And then in customizing the text, you can also localize it. So if you are supporting users who, are, um, who speak different languages, you can customize this information here uh, to, to be in their local language. GovLine also supports different connection uh, authentication modes, or authorization modes, I should say. Um, this is our default where we show you the banner and we show the user who's connected. But we also support the ability to um, ask the user for uh, the permission to log into their machine, or the full reverse of that, which is um, logging into the machine with no prompt and no notification at all. All of those settings, the text customization and the image customization, as well as um, the agent behavior, is controlled by the central server or the Govland administrative GPO. So you can control that information centrally and securely uh, so that your organization has whatever compliance needs that it does as far as uh, these features are concerned. So we have a basic remote control interface here now. Um, when it comes down to it, there's nothing really fancy going on here except we, are, we have keyboard video and mouse access to this machine. Right now we have this via the Govlan agent. So what we're leveraging here is we're leveraging um, encryption and compression uh, to make sure that this is as smooth as possible, um, as well as working well over slow, slow networks. We also have multi-monitor layout. So here, uh, that's a black background, so it's hard to tell. So up here, what we have is a physical representation of the layouts, as well as uh, a span view. And it looks a little weird because the background is black. Let's change that so you can see that it's actually spanning. So let's let that change. Okay. So now what we're doing, we're, we're spanning two monitors uh, at this point. We can also flip between the two monitors as needed and then choose the layout based on the monitor position. So these are some of the basics as far as remote control goes. Um, you know, at the end of the day, when you're a technician and you need to get in to do your work, this is where a technician would feel most at home to see what the user's uh, telling them and, and be able to diagnose issues on the fly. So while you're in a remote control session, uh, what else can we do here? Um, we have a tools tab here that provides a lot of features that allow us to do different things through this remote control session, such as a two-way chat system. Um, this chat system uh, is two-way, and it will allow the technician, and I'll show you what that looks like here as well, to chat with the person in the background. So um, please close 
Outlook. And then here we get the session in the background where we can actively chat with the uh, person. We can also invite other people to the conversation, other GovLAN users uh, specifically, or other anyone else who has the agent installed. We can invite them also to this chat. And you have the ability to take over uh, the remote control session through this chat. It's also worth noting that um, the remote control sessions themselves are uh, many to one and also one to many. So the one to many we accomplish with the tab view, which is what I explained earlier. But the many to one is the ability for many GovLand users to remote control into the same machine and see the same uh, see the same screen. So the chat features, as well as the uh, ability for all the remote control sessions to join in, uh, have the ability to uh, to give you the team collaboration that you might need for multiple people to solve an issue. We also support one-way push notifications, so I can send the message here. Um, exchange will be down tonight. Please uh, close your Outlook. I can save these messages if I wish to uh, save them um, to use them later as shortcuts. And when I hit the Send button, it shows up as a familiar Outlook pop-up uh, here in the background. So these are one-way notifications to, um, to the user. Some of the other features we have are a very powerful task manager and a run as feature. Um, the task manager is sometimes deserves a video by itself, uh, but I'll go over some of the quick features. Let me just make this a little smaller. I'll go over some of the quick features here so you can see um, so what it looks like. So as far as the application tab is concerned, nothing fancy is going on here. It's what you might expect in a normal Windows um, task manager. Uh, in the processes tab, we are actually using um, a heat map to display some of the information. Maybe a little tough to view there, but let's get some activity going on this machine here. IE is always a good one for, for that there. And as you can see, depending on the, uh, the values in the column, um, the column will actually change color so you can see what, you can actually pinpoint what's going on on this machine from the processes tab. We also have a parent and child relationship view where you can see what processes spawn other processes. This comes in handy when you're hunting down something like a malware or antivirus. The top five tab is quite unique to Goverland. Um, what's happening here is Goverland is grouping the, using four resources, uh, CPU, disk IO, memory, and page, and showing you the top five talkers in any one of those categories. Now, this is better than hunting down information on a process list here um, because it gives you at a very at-a-glance view, um, high level, which top five processes are using CPU, and then you can actually see based on the columns um, what the values are. In the performance tab, this is one of my favorite tabs here, um, we can come in here and do some uh, hunting down as far as what caused a specific CPU spike, if we just flag over or hover over um, any one of these peaks, GovLand will tell me the EXE that caused that spike. Um, that goes as well for disk activity and, uh, and memory usage. Um, we have a pretty standard networking tab here that will go over the basics of, the, of, of network utilization as well as um, the ability to manage starter processes. So that, in a nutshell, is the GovLand Task Manager, but we also give you a powerful Run As tool. Now, this Run As tool is basically like using the Run Box uh, on the target machine. You have the ability to input commands here that you want to run on the target machine, uh, but when you hit the Advanced View here, you get to see all the options that you can actually use, such as um, the ability to run that process as a different user, um, and we also support dot slash administrator here so or dot slash so that you can run a process as a, the local administrator on the target. That's very, very handy for um, getting around UAC issues. So one I'll do is, uh, let's say, cmd.exe. 
I want to open an administrative command prompt, let's say on the target machine, and I'll do it as dot slash administrator. I hope I remember this password. And there we go. So now here in the background, uh, what we're using is uh, we've opened a command prompt, um, and it's set as the administrator. Uh, just as if you right-clicked it and you did run as administrator yourself. So you can go ahead and uh, run um, administrative actions using this run as box, which I feel is uh, it's very, very powerful um, and allows you to do a lot of your admin work actually behind the scenes. Um, the next tool that we'll show you is the file manager. And the file manager allows us to uh, copy files to and from as well as browse the target um, target machine. So we can browse any files here. It kind of works a little bit um, like you would expect uh, FTP to work where you can where you push and you pull um, files to and from the remote file system. We also have a remote command prompt so that you can open a command prompt right here through your remote control session without actually having to be on the target machine. So now I can actually run commands in the background on the target machine as any user that I want um, without actually disturbing the user. So I can go ahead and run commands here. I can save commands and use them later on. I can also save commands and uh, share them with other GovLand users. Now the next feature I'm going to show you are the power options. This is something that we've uh, taken the time to redo in Govland version 8. Um, so we've got our standard, some of our standard power options, um, which not necessarily all power, but you can uh, definitely control those power options by using the main power button here at the top. So what we're telling you here is that the machine is powered on, that it's responding to pings, and that the agents are ready. Um, in this case, the machine that we're targeting is not a vPro enabled or AMT based machine, so it's telling us AMT is unavailable. So we have some options here that we can use, um, such as send pop up and lock the screen, as well as our basic power options here. So this screen here can you really give you just a quick snapshot of what's happening on the machine, who's logged in, uh, what's the physical state of the machine, as well as the ability to control auto admin logon. So through this feature here, what we're giving you the ability to do is apply auto admin logon settings to the target machine so that the next time it boots up, it may you may want it to automatically log in. This comes in handy when you're doing, uh, let's say, some migration work or you're doing some OS uh, cutovers and you need to reboot the machines but make sure that they log in to, let's say, take a logon script or something like that. You can apply auto admin logon settings here. It also comes in handy when you're working with kiosk machines um, that have a specific account that need to be logged in as. So you can apply those here and also um, remove them from these screens. So those are some of the things that we have going on as far as uh, the tool set that we have. Uh, we also have the ability to capture the screen, which is printing, um, taking a snapshot, or recording. Uh, you can record the screen in uh, AVI or MOV format. And uh, it's also worth noting that um, these settings can be removed via a policy uh, if your compliance doesn't exactly want anyone to be able to do these things. We can definitely remove these settings via policy. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, about the, the interface now and, and making all these connections. So I have one connection going there. Um, I can go ahead and establish any other connection I want here on the side. I'll just grab a machine that I've used previously and hit connect. So right now I've got this remote control session happening here, and I also have the, our previous remote control session happening here. So right away in our tabular view, we can jump to and from uh, any remote control sessions that we have going on. Uh, I can actually mix and match the protocols. So in this case, I can do another RDP session if I wanted to. I can connect via VNC or any of these other protocols here. I'll be going into some of these shortly. 
Um, once I have multiple tabs going, I can actually click the Monitoring View tab. And what that'll do is it'll get me um, all of the tabs open in one dashboard layout. And it'll also begin to let me know what some of these performance counters are on the, on the target machines. So I can hover over them for some more information. I can figure out who's logged into them as well. I can also right-click and get uh, a lot of the tool set um, that we've uh, discussed earlier right here in the thumbnails view. So this is, this is the actual monitoring view of Goverland. Uh, once you're in monitoring view, you can change the performance counters that you want to see or their updates, um, and you can also save the layouts. So what exactly does that mean? Well, here, I'll do something a little more impressive here. I'm going to reset this view so that you can actually see the, the, the power of the monitoring view and uh, what it means to save and to reload your layout. So I'm going to bring back our favorites panel. And here I have an OU uh, linked to a folder. So these, this folder is live. Any machines that are added or removed from this OU will uh, appear in this list. If I right-click it and select Open Session on this group, what Govland is going to do is going to create a remote control session for each one of those and place them in their own tabs. It's also going to bring us to the monitoring view. So here in the monitoring view, you can see that I'm monitoring all these machines, which turns out really good if you're uh, using a classroom or if you have any labs or, or data centers that you want to monitor the actual desktops of any machines. So again, we've got our performance counters here in the background and so on. So now that I have this layout, I can save it to a file. So here I will say uh, monitor, monitoring view. So I'm going to save this to my desktop. So now, if I ever needed to go back to it, I can close Goverland Remote Control and then jump into the monitoring view. So what that allows me to do is save all the information to the file, double-click it, and then it will automatically open all of the connections that I had uh, available before. So this is a very powerful feature to get you monitoring, um, either performance monitoring or lab monitoring and so on. Again, you can right-click any of these and jump into any of the, uh, any of the features there. So the next thing we're going to go over is um, some of the protocols that we have available for you. Uh, one that I'm really excited to, to bring up is our uh, vPro features. Um, this is something that we've uh, definitely worked, uh, worked some time on, and we wanted to bring it to Government Remote Control as another option. So if I drop the More Options menu down and select a vPro KVM session, we're presented with the vPro screen here. So before we get started on any of this, um, just a few disclaimers up front. You need to configure your vPro machines. You have to um, provision them and get them ready. Uh, once they're provisioned, you can go ahead and use Goverland to actually begin to consume the features, such as the KVM features, um, the ISO mounting, and the power options. Uh, what Goverland can do for you is it can store the credentials of your vPro um, your vPro chips, or if the vPro chips are, con are configured to use Active Directory, Goverland will automatically use your Active Directory settings. So that way you don't have to worry too much about the, um, the authentication to the vPro chip, as long as you have your information um, ready to go. So here we can specify vPro credentials and tell it to remember it uh, for any connection that we have, and Goverland will remember them and apply them whenever we're using a vPro session. So the first thing I'm going to do is a basic um, uh, Intel vPro KVM session. So I'm going to connect to a machine that's uh, KVM capable. Um, Goverland does not have the uh, vPro credentials, so it's going to actually ask me to, uh, to authenticate. So here I'm going to do...
Okay. So now we're in the vPro session uh, through GovLand Remote Control. GovLand will remember the credentials for next time. Um, that way it won't ask me to do anything further with them. Uh, you can, so, And like I said before, if you have uh, Active Directory configured uh, as far as vPro is concerned, GovLand will automatically detect that and apply your Active Directory credentials or any alternate credentials that you specify um, to use there. So now we're in our basic KVM session. Um, you can tell by the uh, the flashing cursor up in the corner. This is how uh, this is one of the ways VPro alerts the target user, saying that they are they are actually uh, have a VPro session uh, going on. You can also go to the management uh, software within your uh, your VPro system, and it will have alerted or or add some entries to the log file. So again, basics. We got key, uh, keyboard, video, and mouse. Um, connected here, we can move the mouse, interact with the user, and do everything that we need to. Um, and uh, again, it's important to note this is vPro, so this is completely out of band. So we're not relying on the operating system at all to make this remote control connection. Um, this is not going through the GovLand agent. This is going strictly through the, through the uh, vPro chip. And to prove that, we'll uh, we'll play around a little bit. Um, this machine here, I'm going to jump into the power options, and um, you'll see here that this light is actually lit now. It's letting us know that the machine is vPro ready, and if we wanted to, we can jump to the uh, web portal for that machine. Now, the power options below here behave a little bit differently when you have a vPro machine. Um, the default options will always jump to uh, using the GovLand agent if it's available. If they're not available but vPro is available, GovLand will then jump back to using the vPro options. Uh, if I click the restart here, you see anywhere the AMT flag is, GovLand is going to automatically default to those actions for the vPro uh, session. For instance, if I hit restart to BIOS here, I'm going to pass that action along to the machine. In this case here, in the background, you'll see the machine reboot, and then it'll come up to... Um, the BIOS as we've commanded it to. So what do we see in our power options? Uh, we see the that the machine is powered on. We're querying the vPro chip for this directly. Um, and also the GovLand agents are not available. Uh, but the, the chip is AMT ready. So we're good as far as um, our state is concerned. And in here, of course, we have uh, KVM access to... Let's just drop that really quick. We have KVM access to the BIOS. So we can go ahead and use our keyboard and our mouse and change anything that we need to change and so on um, right here through your GovLand interface. So if you wanted to, you can also do um, a restart to ISO. So now here, if I wanted to, I'm going to jump into Power Options. And now one of the great things about um, using the vPro functionality is that it's out of band um, you really get full control of your machine. You really get to 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 use the uh, the full power of the machine. You don't have to worry about the operating system. If the operating system is hosed, you can go in there and do things that you need to do. Um, for instance, restarting to a mounted image. This mounted image could do anything that you want, whatever it's designed to. Uh, you just have to find ones that you need to use, um, as well as uh, doing things like... Um, restarting and going into a, let's say, an operating system setup session or to do a startup repair, um, the, 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 the options are actually unlimited when, when it comes to that, as long as uh, you have the right software to do it. So here I have a diagnostic CD. Um, this is just happens to be a Linux CD. I'm just going to tell the machine to reboot to this ISO uh, so that we can get uh, to manage this machine further. So GovLand is letting us know that we have um, an image mounted and that it's going to restart to it. I'm going to close this here, and then we're going to jump back here, and as you can see, uh, we are loaded into this ISO um, to do whatever it needs to do. And we have, again, keyboard, video, and mouse access to a machine at the BIOS level, out of band, no agent necessary, no operating system necessary, 
um, just the ability to manage the machine. And these are this is really really a big big factor. Uh, once you have VPro machines, I suggest you you use this capability and 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 get it working in your environment so that you can um, start you know using all these features. So what we can also do is we will tell this machine to reboot back into Windows. So we'll tell it to restart. Now again, since there's no agent, GovLand knows to use the AMT powers to restart the machine. So we can use this screen here to actually see that the machine is rebooting. And it'll actually let us know when uh, when we're back uh, up and running. So here, um, the machine is yes, the machine is booting back up. Um, it's worth to note uh, at this point we've the uh, power options that we've implemented so far are really hard power options. So um, it's just like going to the machine and and pressing the button. Um, we are in the process of upgrading the power options so that we can do things like soft shutdowns and so on. So as you can see here, Governland is the agents are, are ready again, and we're back to our um, window session that we had earlier. So those are some of the uh, some of the features of VPro. Um, again, you need VPro enabled hardware. Uh, make sure you check with your manufacturer to find the VPro SKUs and make sure they have full management capability so you can actually use some of these features uh, within Goverland. Uh, we're bringing you the ability to use the features as easy as possible and and integrate it into your systems. Uh, so let's go over some of the other protocols while we have some time left. So here we have also the command prompt, which is similar to what I showed you earlier. Uh, we just brought the command prompt uh, basically into our tabs. Uh, so I'll just run a command prompt on this machine. We brought it into our tabs here so you can actually have it um, as part of your tab view and your layouts. So now I have uh, our remote command prompt right here. Um, it's just like any other command prompt. We can uh, also run PowerShell commands through it, just like you would at the command prompt. Oops. I think that's right. Um, so you can go ahead and run processes right through it. Uh, there's nothing fancy happening here except we're giving it to you in a way that uh, really utilizes the UI. Another protocol that we've recently added is the Telnet and SSH. Um, this is really this really comes in handy when you're in a shop where you are jack of all trades and you have to monitor. I'm sorry, manage your network switches as well. Um, you can come in here. Uh, 192.168.1. Oops. I messed that up. So you can come in here and uh, connect to your network switches as well via whatever, uh, either Telnet or SSH. And GovLand will connect to them and um, and get you at your command prompt. So again, we can switch between all these protocols right here built into the UI, we can add it into our uh, monitoring view so you can see everything side by side as well as um, all the other protocols that we have. Uh, one of the last things that I want to show is also some shadowing. Uh, we haven't actually done any shadowing at this point. So what does this mean uh, to shadow sessions? Well, as, as uh, many enterprises would know that you, know, you have a uh, technology such as Citrix or um, remote desktop protocols and gateways to get users access to resources that might be on servers. So what we uh, actually have done uh, to help those users out is the ability to shadow a session. So for anyone who's used these before, they, they know there, there are various methods to help a user out who's within an RDP session. 
Um, Microsoft provides some command line utilities for it. Um, Citrix used to provide uh, uh, user-based support tools for it. Um, but after Server 2012, it got a little bit a little difficult to get into these sessions. Uh, what we do with Govland, we don't rely on any of those uh, base, uh, any of those technologies to get into our sessions. Um, so what I can do is I will, just to demonstrate here, I'm going to start an RDP session to another machine with our great A Woods account. So this here uh, is going to represent an RDP session or Citrix session to another machine. So if I connect to that machine that's hosting all of the sessions, Govland is going to present me with a session selection screen. This session selection screen will let you know uh, everyone who's connected. Um, again, that includes any Citrix and RDP-based sessions. doesn't matter if they're seamless mode or not. Uh, Govland will go ahead and show it to you. So if I click that there, we're going to jump into the um, RDP session that we have here. There we go. So as you can see, we're actually remote controlling that actual session. Um, it's very easy to jump in and out of these sessions uh, to help your users out. And as quick and easy as a feature as that is, it's actually one of our most popular features that uh, users come uh, to Govaland for. It's the ability to help users who are in these RDP sessions um, because they need to do some work or help them out uh, where they wouldn't be able to otherwise. So we've gone over a lot of the features of Govaland. One of them that we haven't gone over um, but I will mention is the remote assistance feature. And remote assistance is the ability to um, go ahead and assist users who are outside of your network. Remote assistance works by sending them a token either via email or um, pre-installing it on their corporate uh, laptops. And um, if the users need help, they can double-click that icon, which will initiate a connection back to you using Govaland, and you'll just get a pop-up on your screen where you can accept the connection and help users who are off your network. Um, off network assistance does require a little bit of um, networking setup on your part, um, a little bit of you know firewalling and so on so that you can get it working. But once you do get it working, it actually turns out to be a very fast and easy to use feature. Um, so we've got remote assistance, remote monitoring. Uh, we've talked about some of the shadowing features as well as um, remote control and all of the protocols. Um, let's see here, and um, also our our UI elements. So that's a very very quick high level overview of Govland Remote Control. And this is one product um, in a series of products that comes from the Govland Management Suite. Um, the, once you get into some of the other products, you'll see that these these products actually connect together very well. Um, getting to remote control features from, let's say, administration and diagnostic and so on, it's very easy. Um, it's also worth noting that in the next two days, we'll be going over um, the administration and diagnostic feature and the scope action feature. So it's exactly the same time as now, um, tomorrow, and also on Thursday. Um, and all of the connection information is the same. So if whatever you use to connect today, all of the links and phone numbers and so on will work then. Um, so please join us tomorrow uh, where we'll be going over, I believe tomorrow, the administrative, administration and diagnostic. So a lot of that's going to be um, using Govland to manage Active Directory um, and to go into the full tool set of administration and diagnostic to help you put out your everyday fires while you're um, working on a, on a support desk or desktop support uh, and so on. So right now, um, what we could do is we're going to go into the Q&A session. So I see we have a, a lot of questions queued up in our uh, Q&A area here. Um, so again, if you have any questions, please post them now into this Q&A section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from the top to the bottom, and, uh, and I'm going to answer the questions as, um, as best we can. Um, just as a reminder, again, this video will be posted on our Govaland channel, and uh, you can go back to it and... 
uh, review it and also, uh, you know, use it to send it to your friends and so on um, from there. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go from the top. Uh, can you use Run As Explorer separate and open with admin functions in Windows 7? Um, I think I understand what you're saying here. Uh, can you use the Run As features and so on without actually having to make remote control sessions? Um, if I'm getting that right, please just let me know. And uh, uh, the answer, the short answer to that is yes. So if I if I can just reset this real quick, I'll just disconnect and unmount everything here, and I'll just show you really quick that you can actually manage all of those things uh, without having to make um, remote control sessions. So I'll go ahead and start Govlin Remote Control. At this point here, we don't have any remote control sessions going. Let me expand this here and just show you a little bit about the favorite section while I'm at it. Um, the favorite section will contain a lot of columns in it. Uh, some might be added, some are not. What I will do is add actually the... Okay, they're added. Okay. So here what I can do is right-click any of the machines, jump into the power options, power them off, reboot them, put them into standby, and so on. We can also do task manager and run as right from here. So if you know what to what you want to run on a on another system, you can do that just by right clicking it and selecting run as. So I, I think that's what we're what uh, our question is. Um, so again, all everything that you've seen in the toolbar can be run right here from the right click menu without actually having to establish a remote control session. Uh, can I work from home using Govland and get to any computer on our network without having to use a VPN into the network? All right, so Govland is really designed as an on-premise solution. Um, you cannot use Govland from home to remotely access a machine within your network. Technically, you can, but you'd have to do a little bit of, um, again, some, some networking to get that done. Um, but uh, generally speaking, Govland is something you would use within your network to manage all the machines on your network as well as provide some uh, some information, uh, I'm sorry, some support to users who are outside of your system. The next question I have is, what if a user changes the administrative password locally to the computer? Does the agent provide a workaround? Well, the Govland agent, that's actually a good question, the Govland agent does not rely on the local administrative password. So as far as the agent is concerned, the agent is installed and um, will authenticate to you. Uh, so I'm sorry, not authenticate to you, authenticate as you. So any action that you perform is going to do an action as you. Um, I think one of the things that you might also be referring to is the run as feature. So if I did run as and I came in here, and I did, let's say, dot slash administrator and entered a password, the system is going to tell you that the password is wrong. So through remote control, there's nothing that you can actually do about that. But if you take a look at tomorrow's uh, webcast, we'll actually be using the administration and diagnostic suite uh, session. We can actually change all of that behind the scenes without having to worry about um, if the machine is uh, has a, a good password or not for the local admin. Again, if you want to put together, you can put together a command right here to change the password. That's another thing that you can do. Um, I don't know the command offhand, but I'm pretty sure anything that you can run at the command line, you can run it right here. And as long as you're using run as uh, local system or run as maybe yourself, or another administrative account, you, you would be able to change the password using this run box if you saw, if you saw fit. Um, I do have some also some comments here about um, the vPro stuff. Um, we are also joined by uh, Joe here, who's actually, uh, who, who's actually pretty familiar with the Intel vPro stuff, and he's giving me some stuff here, which is uh, kind of cool. Um, he would like us to provide, uh, to provide a link to the, 
to the vpro section um, I could actually do that right now I'll pop that into the chat box for anybody to ca uh, to copy um, if you would like some information uh, regarding any of our links and so on feel free to email email us at support at govland com and we will give you everything that you need also all of our links are available at govland com and go ahead and uh, click the menu I'm actually going to show you how to do that really quick um, because sometimes you just need to know how to get to it uh, okay why is this trying to do HTTPS I don't know okay so here's our website. Um, again, you can view our upcoming webcast here with the link on the side, um, as well as if you go to the menu button here uh, in the support section. So what we'll also be doing is uploading this to YouTube, so you'll be able to go here to YouTube to see how to get to this information, as well as uh, in the support section, you can go to the knowledge base user guides and and the forums and so on. The user guides is uh, actually is a work in progress. We'll be uploading uh, user guides shortly for each of the products. And uh, just to go to the YouTube channel, and I can actually send you guys this link here. That's to the YouTube channel itself. We also have playlists in there regarding all of our uh, vPro features, everything that I just demonstrated. We actually have um, a playlist dedicated just to that. Um, also, take a look at the What's New in Garvaland V8 video where I go over each and every um, module and only the new features to V8. So if you needed a catch-up, you can go there. So if anyone has any more questions, we still have uh, a few more minutes to spare. You can go ahead and post them there in the chat box. Okay, I think we're just about done. Again, if anyone has any more questions, feel free to contact us at sales at .com or support at .com. We also have a chat feature right on the uh, on the website. Um, the chat feature uh, allows you to uh, get to a support engineer or sales uh, representative very quickly. Um, and then you can ask any questions that you want there. We're also pretty active on uh, on the Swipe Source community, so feel free to inbox me um, uh, you can do that there. I actually have one last question here. I have some licensing questions. Sure. We'll also take some licensing questions here. Um, how many domains can you support per tech? Uh, so Governland, it doesn't care about your network layout as far as licensing is concerned. You simply purchase a license for each person that will use Governland. Um, you can support any number of domains actually from within Governland. So here we're looking at, let's say we're looking at the feature that um, uh, shows all the Active Directory stuff, such as um, importing an OU or um, the credentials necessary. Govland comes with a credential manager feature. And uh, if you go here to alternate credentials and credential manager, this is where you can add uh, a credential for any domain that you manage. So as long as you're working off of a machine that can access any of these domains, um, you can simply come here and put domain A, these are the cred credentials. Domain B, these are the credentials. And what Govland will do is it will apply the credentials based on the connections that you try and manage it all in the background for you. You can also do um, an IP range, um, and it's also worth noting that we support IPv6, um, and Govland will apply credentials based on an IP range. Or you can do them directly to um, the computer uh, computers themselves. So the credentials part is managed through the credential manager. Once you are, uh, once you have all the credentials in, you can go ahead and begin to use all of the AD features of each site that you might be managing. Um, okay, if I buy a personal license and a year or two later go to work for another company, will I be able to use my personal license? Um, the short answer to that is depends on how you purchase it. I mean, you would need to purchase it either personally or 
via your company. If your company is purchasing it, then the answer is no. But if you buy a personal license, you have the ability um, to to transfer licenses as you see fit. So if you buy one for yourself under your own name, you can unregister it somewhere and then register it somewhere else. Um, there's a transfer option uh, right into right in the uh, right in the software that allows you to move your activations around as you need it. Um, but it's important to note: make sure you're doing it uh, per. You know, if you're purchasing it for yourself, buy it under your own company name and so on. Uh, let's see. How many screens can you view in the monitoring option? Um, you can view as many as you wish. So uh, let's let's do a quick example for you. If I go to the main tab, actually, let's do this. I'll open a session on this machine. I will open a session on. I'm not going to do them all. That way, it's it's easier to see. I'll open a session on this machine. Um, and one more. So now I have three remote control sessions going. Let me close that. Oops. I actually don't. I didn't open any tabs. Okay. Let's do it now. Uh, 64. And of course, Delhi. Okay. So this machine here that says Dell A380 PC is actually a multi-monitor machine. Uh, so this machine has two monitors attached to it. So in the standard tab view, you can switch between the monitors or span the monitors as you see fit. Now when you're in the monitoring view, what Governland does is it it will use the active monitor that you had last selected. So if I want to see this monitor the, the the primary monitor, as we're doing here, that's how we do it. I can jump back into the tab, and then I can switch to monitor two. So now, if I switch back to the monitoring view, that's the one that'll be in the uh, in the monitoring view itself. Um, that also includes the span view. So if I come here and span both monitors, if I go to the monitoring view, uh, we can see the span view for the thumbnail. What we can also do is, if you wanted to. Um, do this, we can come here, view monitor one, add a new tab, make a new connection to the same machine because Govaland supports multiple connections to one to one system. And then this one will say monitor two. So now if we go to the tab view, we got uh, in the monitoring view, we've got two connections to the same machine, each one pointing to a different monitor. So that way you can you can jump between the two as you see fit. So um, these are some of the ways that we you know we provide flexibility so that again it's all about your workspace. It's all about how you want to uh, to to view your workspace and, and things like that. And actually, one thing that I should go over while we got two minutes left, um, there's just so many of these these things in here is the float view. Um, the float view allows us to actually pop these out. So I'm going to come here to float view and say float all views. And what that does is it pops all these out into child windows. Um, I don't typically go over this one too much because I don't have too much real estate here. But what we could do is now you see I've got all these floating views, which you can also save as part of your layout and open them later. And you can resize them um, as you see fit. Uh, and also, if we go to the main view, you can use that float view control to help you manage them. So if I did that, it arranges them for us. So now we've got thumbnail views, we've got float views, um, monitoring views, we've got all kinds of stuff in there, and then you can save it with the Save Layout button, and it'll close and open the sessions um, as you have them saved. So that's about all the time that we have. Uh, I hope this was informative. I hope everyone uh, learned something about Govland Remote Control. Um, again, there's probably some things in there that um, that you may want to see as well. If you have additional questions or if you want um, some more uh, instructional videos and so on, please reach out to us at sales at govland com or support at govland com, or you can um, reach out to us via our website, uh, and we can. Uh, uh, do some online chat sessions and so on. Um, 
Again, tomorrow we'll be going over the remote administration suite, which is a very, very powerful um, uh, way to manage your machines behind the scenes as well as managing Active Directory. Um, and then on Thursday we'll be going into our configuration management piece, which allows you to uh, to manage multiple machines at one time. Um, and and to that, there's really no end to it. Um, but the uh, scope action and, and configuration management section is something I also suggest everybody come and take a look at. Again, all of these will be recorded and uploaded to uh, to YouTube um, for viewing later on. So again, take a look at our YouTube channel or come to our website. Um, and that's about it. So I hope everyone uh, has a good day and uh, they found this informative and will come back and ask some more questions. Thank you very much and have a good day.